Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. I'm Paul with Stud Pack. In our previous video, you saw that we built this temporary wall to support our ceiling and part of our roof because we had to remove the original load-bearing wall in preparation for our new beams, which we are still waiting on. Now, remember that oven we put out by the street and Jordan said the oven will be gone before the beams are here? Well, that's true. We are still waiting on the beams. Today's Tuesday. They promised me tomorrow, Wednesday, six days after I ordered them. And you'll notice on this wall right here, I put the studs under the joist. That's how I do it. And that's really how it should be done. They're doing good, except for this little guy right here, this treated one, it's got quite a bow in it today. But don't worry, little buddy, as soon as we get that beam in here, we're gonna take the load off of you. Now, speaking of costs, a lot of you are asking about the cost of our structural engineer and how did I find him? So they have a flat fee of $500 and that includes a site visit and their drawing that we submit to the city along with our permit. I found my guy through my brother-in-law. So I kind of got lucky I had an in, but I actually did a search on my phone for structural engineer and in our city of about 350,000, the company that we actually use came up second in that search. So it shouldn't be too hard to find. If you're in a smaller town, I would probably go to the permit office and ask them who they recommend. So remember when I said that we had the original drawings to this house and that satisfied our engineer? Well, what if you don't have drawings to your house? What are you gonna do? Well, let me show you. In our previous video, I mentioned a 12 inch long bit that I had. I don't know anywhere where that's 12 inches. So I went home and actually got the bit and here it is. It's three quarter inch, 24 inches long. And I bought this years ago to determine the depth of a footing on a job I was doing in Southern California, just for the engineer. So this slab we're standing on should be about four inches thick. I've got a piece of tape here. What do you say we give her a whirl and see how thick this slab is, Jordan? Let's do it. All right. All right, I'm about halfway. I'll be able to hear it and feel it in the drill when it goes through the slab. There we go, there we go, perfect, right at four inches. Now let's go over here and show you how we find a footing. So let's say you're in the designing phase of your project and you need to know how thick your slab is right there for that new post, that new wall, that new beam. You're not sure there's a footing there. This is how you do it. You can remove a piece of baseboard and drill right here, or you can pull back a corner of the carpet and there's plenty of room to drill between the tackless and the wall. Let's give it a, a go right here and see how deep this footing is. I'm just gonna go right there. So this three quarter inch hole that deep is about at the limits of this drill. I hit a piece of rebar. I can tell by what the bit is doing, but you get the idea. I could simply move this to a new location to satisfy the engineer. They make bits that cut through rebar, but you see what we're trying to talk about to establish the depth of your footing. So we're gonna leave that there and let me show you today's project. If you look way up there, you see a two by four that is nailed to the bottom of the roof rafters and the roof rafters are 24 inches on center. They're two by sixes. And then we have these braces coming down from that two by four to the top of this load bearing wall. Now those braces have to go because they're in the way of our new beam. So this morning I used my dot laser. You've seen us use it before to get this two by four directly under the one that's attached to the bottom of the roof rafters. The roof rafters are two by sixes, 24 inches on center. So we're gonna build a temporary wall from this two by four on the slab to that two by four on the bottom of the roof. Once we do that, we can remove these braces that are now taking the roof load to our load bearing wall that has to come out. Now I bought 16 foot two by fours to go from here all the way to the roof. And you may be wondering, well, why aren't we supporting the ceiling? Well, remember this ceiling is at eight foot and it comes down because we're reframing it at nine foot. Now I could take the ceiling down first, but then I would need a really tall step ladder so I could stand on the top step of that one to reach way up there. But since I had this ceiling here, I can use it as a walkway to put in our wall. I'll be up there with a nail gun. Jordan's gonna be cutting the lumber outside, bringing it in, we'll build this wall, and then we can take this ceiling down. So that two by four up there is at an angle and I need to support it properly. So why don't we take a walk outside and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. Well, we're outside at our dumpster and let's let this two by four that I've got on this step right here represent that two by four that's on the bottom of our roof rafters. And so right now we have another two by four like that that's going down to the top of our load bearing wall that has to come out. And it's also in the way of our beam. So this brace has to go out, but before I can pull the brace out, 
I need to support the roof. So I jumped up in the attic and I held this under there plumb because I'm trying to match this angle. I held this up there plumb. I just used my torpedo level as a guide and I drew a line and that's my angle. Now let's go over here and I'll show you the next step. I just used my speed square to make a corresponding 90 degree line. This goes away and that forms a bird's mouth just like that. So this was my template that I used to mark the ends of these six 16 foot two by fours. I've already got these four cut. I made, I made the initial cuts with my circular saw, just like you see here, and I'm gonna finish them with the jigsaw. So why don't we finish those two real fast and get that done. There we go, those six are all ready to go. Now you may be wondering, what is this cut you made right there? Well, remember, I'm going to be in the attic and Jordan's got to come down here and measure these all by himself and cut them and bring them to me. So that little kerf is going to be a spot for him to hook that tape measure and pull his number from here. Pretty cool, huh? What do you say, Jordan? You ready to put these in? Yep, let's do it. All right. I'll get tooled up and head in the attic, my favorite spot. At least it's chilly today. That's true. All right, let's go. Alrighty gang, that was a huge step for us today. Since we didn't get the beams, we regrouped and we built this 16 foot wall that's supporting our roof. Check this out. <laughs> that hurts. I don't think the Gronk could even get through that. So remember that thing is 16 feet tall. We made these an eighth long. So it kind of sprung the roof up and transferred the roof load to these. We even repurposed some of our ceiling joists as horizontal bracing. We've got one diagonal brace and two braces back to the structure. So it's supported this way and this way. You also saw in the time lapse where we took down our original diagonal bracing for the roof and our ceiling joist, all that stuff is outside. All I gotta do is sweep up and vacuum and we're ready for tomorrow. I went by the lumber yard this morning to check on my beams. They said they'd be here tomorrow, but then they called me later and said, hey look, stud pack, we're watching your videos. Unless you get 1500 likes, we're not gonna deliver. So please guys, get down there and smash that like button for us so we have some work to do tomorrow. We'd really appreciate it. Fingers crossed for that delivery. We'll see how you guys do and we'll see you tomorrow. All right, gang, today is beam installation day. We're gonna put this little one up. Hopefully those guys deliver it. Keep smashing that like button. But while we're waiting, let's talk about these two king studs right here. The plans call for king studs on the end of the beam 
nailed together. So we used two 10 footers. We just kept them long like we told you about. I'm gonna talk about how these are nailed together when we do the other side. But what I did first, I used my dot laser. And remember we showed you when we cut the top plate, I projected that line down to my bottom plate and I cut this spacer to ensure that these were perfectly plumb. Just nailed that to the bottom plate with two nails and then attached our king studs at the bottom and right here at the top. So let's go over there and get that other one. Then we can cut our beams to length when they show up. All right, gang, both kings are in. You saw me put a six inch structural screw through the kings into the original top plates. That wasn't called for. It's just something I did for my own peace of mind just to tie our new structure into the original structure. Every little bolt, every little screw is gonna help tie all this together. We've got a lot of weight we're dealing with right here. And so speaking of weight, let's talk about how these are nailed together. So the plans call for the two kings and the three studs under the beam to be nailed together to uh, acquire, what's it called? Composite okay. action. The plans call for the two kings and the three studs under the beam to be nailed together for composite action. What that means is they're fastened together in a way that they act as one member. So that when you put a vertical load on the top, one of the members doesn't buckle out. The load is on all three members equally and they act as one unit. So on the kings, what we did, the nails are eight inches apart staggered so this is eight this is eight and obviously 16 along each side and about an inch from the edge and then we we nailed all these and then we flipped it over and we did the same thing so i've got a nail here and i've got a nail here got a nail here one way and a nail here the other way all the way up on both sides and the studs under the beam will get the same thing. So hopefully those beams are gonna show up. In fact, I think I hear a truck. You wanna go check it out, see if that's our boy? Let's see if our gold is here. All right, let's go check it out. All right, y'all came through for us. Check it out, there's our beams. Woo! We appreciate you smashing that like button for us. Not only did we get our gold delivered, we got some silver too, look at that. That's our custom made hanger to attach the two beams. About 80 bucks from Simpson. And we waited, what, six days for all this stuff. Yep. Pretty crazy these days, yeah, how long you gotta wait. Gold, <coughs> gold faster. Yep. Now, these are pretty tall. I mean, they're 16 inches tall, look at that. I think the other ones we've done have been 12. Right. So why don't we take this banding off, go inside and take our measurement, cut these and start getting them installed.
Alrighty gang, come on down here. We got our beam assembled according to specs. We popped the line three inches from the top and bottom edge. Specs one of the screws three inches from the top and bottom edge. These are the screws we used, quarter by three and a half inch structural screws. The specs also wanted them 16 inches apart, which is what we have here, aligned with our studs that are 16 inches apart, and then staggered. So the bottom row is staggered eight inches from the top row, just like that. And whenever we're assembling a beam, we're always mindful of where our joist hangers are gonna go because you don't want this to happen. You don't want a joist hanger over a screw. That's the worst is when the nail is at the screw location. So we planned all that out. And then if you come on down here to my left, you'll see we even planned it out for the big guy and we're fine. We got a screw here, one here, that one gets covered. And then if you see right here, what you're seeing is a splice in the top lamination of the beam. Obviously this, this can't be one sheet. So they're spliced together. And then the splices I think are a minimum of eight inches apart for maximum strength. So now that this is built, we want to get our stud packs built so that when we lift this beam in the air, we can slide that stud pack under them and set the beam down. So let's hop outside and build those stud packs. All right guys, both stud packs are ready. We got one right here, the other one's on the other end, and they are nailed together just like the Kings were to give us that composite action so that this guy is acting as one solid post, and it is solid. And if you saw from the time lapse, we nailed them all together first and then cut the whole thing to length so our bottom and our top perfectly flush. So now it's time to lift this beam. Did you eat your Wheaties this morning, bud? I did. Because I was gonna have you hold it up for me while I put the stud packs in. Okay. You ready? You've seen us in the past lift heavy stuff. I and mean, we could lift that if we wanted to. It's not that heavy, but we have a lot going on up here. That thing is a tight fit in this stud, in this uh, beam cavity. We have all these wires in the way. We have this wall in the way, this brace in the way. So I'm gonna get in the attic and rig up a hoist and we're gonna lift this thing into place safely. So what do you say, Jordan? We switch from our carpenter's hats to our rigger's hats. Let's do it. All right, let's get it done. All right, gang, I've got a cable hoist that I bought to lift the piano, so we're gonna get more use out of it today. And we're gonna simply hang it from this rafter to lift that beam. We have our dot laser set up at the midpoint of the span. That way I'm lifting directly at the center. And the first thing I'm gonna do is drill a hole through this rafter. All right. I've got this 5 8 inch bolt with more washers than I need, but that's all right. I'm gonna put it through that hole. This is going to be tricky. Yeah. Man. All right. I'm going to hook this over the bolt just so I'm not having to reach so high in the air. And the washers are trapping that so it's not going to slide right. off, right? Exactly. Something just went in my ear. All right. Now, this rafter that we're lifting from is being supported here and here and there off the main roof. So I'm really comfortable that it's strong enough to lift that beam. What do you think that is, Jordan? Less than 200 pounds? Uh, no. Right around 200? Oh, yeah, I think it's probably heavier than 200 pounds. Okay. And here's our hoist. Lock it on there. There we go. All right, let's see if it'll reach, bud. All right. <laughs> okay. All right, gang, there's our setup. We're ready to go. I'm strapped off to the rafter up here. I can crank comfortably right here, and Jordan's going to show you the bottom. You ready? Here we go. Oh, easy. Is it pretty balanced? Nothing's creaking, always a good sign. Whoop. 
What was that? All right, gang, so I'm about all the way I can lift right now. We knew that was going to happen. That's why we use this strap. So Jordan's going to screw a block to each king stud. I'm going to lower the beam onto those blocks, remove this strap, and hook directly to our chain. Then we can lift it the rest of the way. All still good? Yep. Uh, this guy's gonna just give us grief. I can I can disconnect it. You're gonna put a screw in it? Yeah. Let me push it as much as I can. Yep. All right. Perfect. Good thinking. Yep. Okay. Look at that. Is that it? Yep. Nice. Are we in? Yep. Woohoo! Sweet. All right, I'm gonna hop down and we'll put in our stud packs and then lower it back down. Yep. All right, coming down. All right. All righty, gang. Stud packs are in. Woohoo! Now you notice we put in some six inch structural screws just to tie the stud pack to the kings just to join it all together. And if you're wondering, this is actually where our name came from. If you go back and look at the fourth video we ever made, we put up a beam similar to this, but different in a lot of ways. Our family had decided on a couple of names for the channel. I knew Jordan didn't like either one of them. So all day long we were installing stud packs and then we had to move a stud pack. And at the end of the day, Jordan says, Dad, I love that name stud pack. And I said, go for it, let's do it. And the rest is history. So these are in. All that's left is to put in the 10 joist hangers. There are seven singles and four doubles, and then we can remove this wall. So we're gonna install the joist hangers with this palm nailer. We'll be sure to put a link in the description below. These things are awesome for these confined spaces. They're a little loud, so you gotta wear hearing protection. And then if you come over here, we have our bottle jack ready, and we cut a stud, because some of these are gonna have to be lifted up, so we're all flush on the bottom. So what do you say, bud? You ready to finish this thing? Let's do it. Let's do it. Alrighty guys, that beam is up. Went just as we planned it. Really no hiccups at all, no problems. You know, I think about something like that a lot. And then when it all comes together, it is such a good feeling. The worst part of the whole thing was waiting for the beams. You did see me use that palm nailer. I had 80 nails to drive, 10 hangers, eight nails a piece. I know they make that positive placement tool where you put the tip in there and it fires the nail. 
I just don't do this enough to, to warrant owning one of those. So the palm nailer is a great option. The other thing, if you saw us under the beam, we always made sure we had a block here as a secondary backup in case the come along failed. So that was great. And this was really a great run through for this one. This one's gonna be like seven feet longer and about a hundred pounds heavier than this one. And look gang, we don't have anywhere to lift it from. I can't get up that high to that roof and I don't know that it would support it anyway. So leave us a comment and let, let us know how you would raise that beam. Uh, I know they make a genie hoist or a duct hoist as I call it, and you crank it up, it's like a forklift like that. That may be our best option, but I sure like the way that that hoist gave us total control and we could move it any way we wanted to. And this beam has a lot more challenges than this one. One end's gonna sit in a bracket on the beam we just put in. The other end's gonna be on a stud pack. We have this cathedral ceiling on one side and the dining room ceiling yet to be framed on the other side. And we also have to account for the foyer ceiling, which is already there. So make sure you stay tuned for that video. If you like this video, be sure to smash that like button for us. We'd really appreciate it. Leave us a comment down below and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you on the next one.